Hey, what's up, everybody? We're going to rank every starting quarterback Wisconsin has had since Brett Bielema. Tell you who's the best and who's the worst and where does Mertz fit into all this? Um, some of the answers might surprise you. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. I am Ryan Herrings, the host of Lockdown Badgers, former co-host of the Bucky Cast. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day, free and available wherever you podcast, free and available on YouTube. Guys, the support has been incredible and awesome. Uh, for everyone that has subscribed on YouTube that's liked the videos, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, for the people listening on, on uh, podcasts, guys, you're incredible. Guys and gals, you're incredible. Thank you so much as we try to build this community. So fun show today. Um, I want to try. I wanted to try to do this for a while. I, I like chopping stuff like this up. We're going to look at every starting quarterback since Brett Bielema. Uh, so 2006, essentially, after uh, the legend stepped down, B.A. Um, we're going to rank them. Who's the best? Who's the worst? Completely subjective. This is only my opinion, guys. I could be way wrong. Let me know. Um, we're going to go through and, and just break it all down. I have a couple of tiers set up. Again, just for clarity's sake. To be on this list, you had to throw at least 75 passes. Not a lot, but at least we're, we're not going to have, um, you know, Chris Borland is throwing passes, right? So you have to at least have chucked the ball a little bit at Wisconsin since 2006 to be on this list. And with that, we're going to jump into it. There's 14 guys. I think probably everyone can guess the, the number one, uh, but we're going to get into it. We're going to start with number 14. And again, some of these guys, you could you could mix it up a little bit for sure and get no argument from anybody, but someone's got to be last. The number 14 quarterback since uh, Brett Bielema took over, Dustin Shear. Uh, he was part of that just 2008 season. He six career touchdowns, five career interceptions, 54% completion percentage, and just never could do much of anything. Uh, he was a three-star recruit. Just didn't pan out. Um, so Dustin Shear is is my number 14. Coming up at 13, also played in that 2008 season. That was just, frankly, a disaster. Uh, Alan Everidge. Alan Everidge was a dual-threat guy. For those who don't remember, this is going in the Wayback Machine a little bit if you're a younger fan. He transferred in from Kansas State uh, kind of before transfers were in vogue. He was a dual-threat guy. There was actually pretty high hopes for him. He was a lefty. And then I remember early on in that 2008, eight season he took some shots man and he just he didn't have it five career touchdowns five career interceptions for the badgers um 13 uh number 12 danny o'brien so we go to another transfer uh danny o'brien transferred in from maryland and he had a really good uh, or he was the acc freshman of the year at maryland so dob uh danny o'brien came in with some hype and some real legitimate thought of this could be the next impact guy at wisconsin kind of following in in russell wilson's uh footsteps and he just flamed out, completely flamed out, undersized. Uh, actually, not undersized, but just he just couldn't do anything. And he had an interesting quote. Daniel Bryan talked about uh, many years later. He said, if I could do it again, you know, I, I really would have stuck it out at Maryland. I was having success there. And, you know, he, he wishes he would have finished what he had started. I think probably he saw, you know, the, the shiny thing being Wisconsin and transferred. And it just never panned out for him. So Daniel Bryan is my number 12. Um, who he actually caught on with the Edmonton Eskimos for a while, which interesting fact made him the only professional quarterback from Maryland playing during that time period. Uh, so Daniel Bryan was my number 12, number 11, Tanner McAvoy, who can forget Tanner McAvoy in the winding twisting career he had at Wisconsin, you know, the Gary Anderson comes in, right. And Gary Anderson wants to do something different, which different not always bad, right? He wanted a dual threat quarterback. He wanted a quarterback that was, was at least equally a threat with his legs as his arms. So he went into the the Juco market. Um, and Tanner McAvoy is a big win for those who don't remember. He was a four-star guy. He was a very big win on the, the transfer, kind of the recruiting market. Um, really, really athletic. Everyone who remembers Tanner McAvoy, high, high-level athleticism, big frame. Um, but as a quarterback, just wildly inaccurate, right? He, he made things happen with his feet. Um, which is why I put him above some of the other people that we had on this list. He ran for six touchdowns during his quarterback season. Um, and even after he switched to safety, and by the way, he, he became a great safety. Tanner McAvoy was a successful recruit for Wisconsin, even if, though the quarterback aspect of it was, a, frankly, a disaster. 
And it was a disaster because it also set the team back. It, it wasn't just that he was good. It impacted Joel Stave. It was just a complete disaster. He was forced into that spot, and he was clearly not capable of playing it at the Big Ten level, at least not in, the, at least not in any type of pro-stylish offense that Wisconsin was still having to run. But really good safety. Played with Seattle for several years in the NFL. Caught on. Um, unfortunately, just not a great quarterback. He's my number 11. Going to number 10, we get into another dual threat quarterback. And this guy was a case of what could have been. What could have been with Kurt Phillips? So going a while back now, um, but Kurt Phillips, when he recruited uh, under Bielema, Kurt Phillips was a four-star. And again, we y'all know this. We don't get many elite high school quarterbacks, you know, four-star guys. Like we got Graham Mertz and it was just, we set off the champagne and the fireworks landing a four-star out-of-state quarterback. Kurt Phillips was a four-star guy. He was the Gatorade player of the year. Uh, Max Preps, I think, had him at 107th best player in the country. Uh, he was rated as the seventh best dual threat quarterback. He was a guy in high school that put up gaudy numbers, dual threat on the ground, in the air, got to Wisconsin, and he had multiple, multiple knee injuries. It's just a shame, man. And every team, every fan base, we certainly have other guys we can point to and say what could have been if not for the injuries. Kurt Phillips is definitely one of those dudes. He stuck with the program. He ended up starting some big games, a Big Ten championship game. Um, but there's he just had no juice left. The the knee injuries robbed him. Um, and he was never super talented with the arm. Like he had a good enough arm, but he he was a guy who who needed to be a dual threat to be impactful. And he ended up not rushing for a single rushing touchdown in Wisconsin as a guy who was one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in high school that season. So that kind of tells you what happened to his legs. He finished with 642 passing yards and five passing touchdowns. Kurt Phillips, number 10. Uh, finishing off with this tier, and then we're going to get into the next tier, is Bart Houston at number nine. Uh, Bart Houston was a funny guy. He has, he has a couple really enjoyable interviews on YouTube post game. Um, you can tell he likes football. He enjoys it. He was a four-star, high three, low four-star kid out of De, uh, De La Salle in California, which is a powerhouse program. Right, that's a big, big time program. So this is another guy who was a big get. He was a big win. Uh, ended up throwing for 1,500 yards in his career, nine touchdowns, five interceptions, but not very mobile. Didn't have a great arm. Um, you know, he had some moments. He started, you know, there were the, the LSU game at Lambeau. You know, he started that game and made some plays. He also threw a couple of interceptions in that game that let LSU stick in it. But, you know, so I got him at number nine. Definitely had some moments as a Badger. Uh, I think it's pretty fair to say he did not live up to the recruiting expectations, however. All right, guys, coming up, we're going to get into the mid-tier. And we're going to we're gonna kind of talk about where Graham Mertz fits into this. I'm curious if you guys think I'm off base on it. Um, but first, today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Uh, yeah, Built Bar, again, I talk about it all the time. It's not hyperbole. It's something that I use uh, almost on the daily. I have the, you know, on Amazon, you can set up the recurring buys, so you don't even have to think about it. I've got Bill Bar's recurring buy. They come to my house monthly. They drop off a variety pack. And whenever, I, whenever, whenever I'm hungry, uh, I need a mid-morning snack, a mid-afternoon snack, or when I'm going to, for a run, gym, hike, like Bill Bar is my sidekick. It is my companion, my co-pilot on my fitness journey, and they are fantastic. 100% pure chocolate, 17 grams of protein, three grams of sugar. It is so tasty, guys. The, the variety of flavors is incredible, but it's healthy. It's it's what you need. It's what we've been waiting for as, as guys and, and, and ladies trying to get healthy and having something we can go to that tastes good. It's nutrition. It fuels us, but we don't feel guilty about it. And our body likes it. Our body doesn't get sluggish because we eat it. Um, it's something that everybody at Lockdown is obsessed with and for good reason. At Bill Bar, they are all about the taste. The flavors are incredible. Um, try the white chocolate cookies and cream. Go to built.com, promo code LOCK15. That's built.com, promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your order. Um, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order at built.com. You will not regret it. All right, guys. Thanks for making, again, Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. Nothing more valuable than your time and to give any of it to listen to this and to interact with us. Um, I say it all the time, but I, I appreciate it more than you realize, more than you know. Let's get into the mid-tier now. We're ranking all the quarterbacks, just as a reminder, ranking all the quarterbacks since the Brett Bielema era, so 2006. Um, we've gone through 14 through 9. And again, some of those guys, listen, that you can split hairs on a lot of those guys. You're going to be able to split hairs on some of these guys. But I think we're getting closer to points where I can say, I definitely think this guy is better than this guy. So definitely let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know. If I'm a little too low on Bart Houston, Tanner McAvoy, Daniel O'Brien, 
Uh, and we're going to get into the mid-tier. So at number eight, I got Graham Mertz. And I think there's some people that are going to say I'm a little too low on him. And I think there's going to be some people say I'm a little too high on him. I've got Mertz at eight. And I want to emphasize that the book on Mertz isn't written yet. Like the couple intro, the intro, the prelude, chapters one through three are written, right? But there's still chapters four, five, and six. Like there's more to come here for better or worse. But where we're standing now, you know, Mertz does have 3,200 career passing yards. He does have more career touchdowns and interceptions. Some of that, obviously, that Illinois game is, is a boost there. Last year wasn't great for him. Like the turnovers are a problem. The inaccuracy at times is a problem. But he has had big flashes. You know, we've won quite a few games with him as the starting quarterback. Um, and I think he's going to get better. I, I really, truly believe Mertz is going on the ascension. I don't know what the ultimate ceiling is. I, excuse me. I've always said with Mertz that people probably overvalued the ceiling a little bit because I've never seen a great arm and he's not super mobile. He's not. Gr so I think the tools are always a little under, under the elite status, but I think there's more room to grow here. I got him at eight. Uh, coming up at seven, a Quarterback that uh, I think a lot of people soured on, I would say is probably good. Uh, probably a good word. Alex Hornibrook, I have at seven. So I have Hornibrook above Mertz. I think it's fair. You know, Hornibrook had had a great season. I shouldn't say great. Had a good season, which Mertz I don't think has done yet. That 2017 season where the Badgers were on the precipice, right? They were right there knocking on the doors to get into the college football playoffs. You know, he went 25 touchdown passes that year. 25 touchdown passes. He had 15 interceptions too. So. I mean, it's not really the two to one ratio that you're looking for, but he does finish his Badger career with 5,400 passing yards. He transferred to Florida State, didn't play much there for his super senior season, uh, but he did finish. Listen, he threw for 5,400 passing yards, 47 touchdowns, 33 interceptions. You know, he was the three star guy that followed Paul Christ over from Pitt when Paul Christ took the job at Wisconsin. So I think he was fine. Like he's he's right. Literally, if you, if you think of the fact we have 14 quarterbacks I'm ranking, I got him at seven. I got him right in the middle. And I think that's a fair ranking for Alex Hornibrook. Obviously, that 2018 season, everyone looks back at, and it was just a massive, massive disappointment. Like, he did not build on that 2017 season, but neither did anyone else. Like, the whole offense was disjointed. The offensive line was poor. The receivers didn't get better. Um, so, yeah, I got Hornibrook at seven. Coming up at six is a guy who I've, I have always felt this dude is underrated among Badger fans, or at least a segment of Badger fans. Um, I got Joel Stave. I got Stave at six. I got him above Mertz. I got him above Hornibrook. Frankly, I I could make an argument that he should be higher. And you know what? On the fly adjustment, I'm going to bump him up one. So I'm going to go back in order. I'm going to say Jack Cohn, who I had at five. I'm going to put Jack Cohn at six. Um, Cohn is really good, guys. He just didn't play a long time. Uh, the, the hallmark of Jack Cohn uh, was the 23 to 8 touchdown interception ratio. That's fantastic. 23 to 8, guys. I mean, if you're if you're getting that out of a Wisconsin quarterback, he completed 68 percent of his passes. So a great completion percentage and he's limiting mistakes and he can punish defenses when they overplay the run. I thought Cohen was super solid. Um, I got him at six. Like I said, I bumped Stav on the fly. I'm bumping Stave over Cohen and I'm going to get into Stave in a second. I know a lot of people disagree on that, um, but Cohen was was really good. Above average starter for the Badgers. Again, I got him in my top six. Very accurate, good decision maker, and he had enough arm. Not a great arm, but he had enough. He had enough physical tools. You remember against Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game, like he accounted for yards on the ground against a great Ohio State defense. So big fan of Jack Cohn. Um, I like him a lot. I got him at six. Now let's move to Stave, who I just recently, literally in the last 10 seconds, bumped up to five because I am, I really like Joel Stave, and I think people are too low on him. Here's the thing. Stave, again, was, was a walk-on, right? Didn't come in with a lot of pedigree. He finished 31 and 10 as a starter. 31 and 10. I get it, guys. Um, win loss record is not solely a quarterback stat. I, I would never judge a quarterback only based on that. But it also matters, right? You, you don't completely discount it. You know, the quarterback is the most important position on the football team. It's the the king on a chessboard, right? It's I mean, it's the power. Like you can't have a 31 and 10 record and be a terrible quarterback or a terrible leader Threw for 7,600 passing yards, uh, 48 touchdowns. He did have 37 interceptions. So that was always kind of the knock on him. He really only had one really good year, but I'll contend that he was messed up by the coaching transition. Gary Anderson did him no favors. And if he had been allowed to continue progressing under a stable coaching um, environment with somebody who actually kind of developed him, believed in him, 
uh, he would have been, I think, I think he'd be much higher on this list. You know, big guy, six, five, six, six, had a long delivery, not, not a quick delivery, but he had a big arm. He could take some punishment. Uh, I, I like Stave a lot. Uh, so I have him at five, really based on the fact that he's a winner. Um, and he had a big arm. Let's get into let's get into um finishing up or wrapping up this tier. So in tier two, I've got Mertz, Hornerbrook, Jack Cohn, Joel Stave. I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know if I'm a little too high or too low on any of those guys. Uh Jack Cohn just got an undrafted free agent offer. You know, he's I think he's with the Colts now. So obviously there's there's a chance for him to stick on an NFL roster. I think he's I think he's been super solid. And Stave, like I said, is one of the most underrated badgers of the last 20 years. Said it. Argue it. I don't think so. One of the most underrated badgers of the last 20 years. All right, guys, coming up, we're gonna get into the final four. I think everyone knows who number one is, but who do you think is two, three, and four? Um, best badger quarterback since 2006. Uh, but first, today's show, guys, is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source, all your sports betting needs and information, and you can't beat it. Um, I'm a sports junkie. I'm into all sorts of sports. The futures stuff that you can do on Bet Online is incredible, right? I have money on the Bucks winning a championship. I have money on the Suns winning a championship. I have a future bet on the 49ers, and baseball's going on, right? We're we're a month or so into the baseball season. This is a great time if you have a good feel on a team. If you think a team like maybe the Mets is over overperforming. Maybe you think the Braves, they won the World Series last year. Might be a good time. They're they're struggling, but they just got Ronald Acuna back, a.k.a. one of the three best young players in baseball. This is a time if you think they're going to bounce back, put five bucks on them and just enjoy the ride. It's a lot of fun. Uh, BetOnline, the website's easy to use, and it's not just sports. BetOnline has all your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Uh, BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, guys. We have reached the pinnacle of badger quarterback play since 2006 and again this is not that's not saying a ton outside of a couple players this has not been what you would call a stalwart position in the last 20 years or so 15 years or so uh but we are going to get into what i would call the top four on this this quarterback list um number four is a guy who only played significantly one year but i loved his game i loved this dude's game and I wish that he could have played more. I wish that we could have had him for two or three seasons. Um, he followed up from John Stocko. I'm curious if anyone has guessed the name silently in their head by now. I'll give it a, a three count. Tyler Donovan. I loved Tyler Donovan's game. Undersized, tough as nails. Um, true dual threat. In-state kid came out of Heartland, Wisconsin. Um, he played 2007, was really his only year starting because he was behind Stocko. But just a tough as nails, gritty, competitive, dual threat quarterback. I love guys who can move around and make things happen with their feet. And, you know, Donovan did that. He ran for five touchdowns that year as a quarterback, 277 yards. He really gave the offense an element that they needed. By the way, he also threw for that one season 2,600 yards with 17 touchdowns, right? So if you add in his pass, his rushing touchdowns, he had 23 touchdowns that year in his one year of starting. You know, you if we had him for a couple years, you're talking about a guy who, who could have put up 50, 60, 70 career touchdowns for the Badgers. Very tough. Like I said, he took some real shots, but he was a gritty, um, undersized, but just big heart. Enough arm. Not a great arm, but enough arm. Um, really good player. Tyler Donovan. Uh, really, really liked him. Lots of athleticism um, and, a, and a winner, a gritty player. Number three, we got John Stocko. Uh, Stocko, another guy in, similar to Stave in that, a lot of people, I feel like, were never in love with him, but he won a lot. Those, those Badger teams won a lot of games, won a lot of bowl games. Uh, twenty nine and seven as a starter. That's not that's not a complete fluke, guys. Uh, seven thousand two hundred twenty seven passing yards, and a guy who, who strung together a lot of two hundred passing yard games. I think he holds Wisconsin's record for most two hundred yard passing games. He had four three hundred yard passing games. Again, this is Wisconsin we're talking about. You know, Stock was a guy who who could really sling it around, big arm. Uh, somebody who was also kind of a big pro style guy, you know, took some punishment. Stocko, I got at number three. Again, his inclusion is a little wonky because he overlaps the the Barry Alvarez and the um, the Brett Bielema eras, you know. So I didn't know if I should include him or not, but he did play in 2006. That was his last season before Tyler Donovan took over. Let me know if you think I'm too high on Stocko or too low, guys. If you would have Tyler Donovan over him. Um, I know there's a lot of fans who were never that impressed with John Stocko and thought Tyler Donovan should have actually played a little earlier, but I, I think you have to look at the totality of Stocko's career. 
uh, the 7,000 passing yards, almost 30 wins and only seven losses. So I got Stocko at number three. We're getting into now the last two. I think people have probably guessed it by now. Um, Scott Tolzina got number two. Tolzina was awesome, guys. He was, listen, I get it. He, he, there was nothing sexy about uh, Scott Tolzina's game. You know, he's not very big. He didn't have a big arm. Uh, certainly was not um, uh, a speedy guy, you know, eluding defenders on his way, prancing to the end zone. But Tolzien was a genius quarterback, uh, incredibly efficient at the helm of two amazing, you know, really, really good Badger teams offenses, especially his senior season, that 2010 season. Uh, and just an orchestrator, a guy that you can win a ton of games at the college level with a guy like Scott Tolzien. You know, the NFL tools aren't there, even though, listen, low key, people may not realize this. Scott Tolzien had a cup of coffee in the NFL and played for a couple teams for a little bit. In fact, he was with the 49ers and he earned a nickname of Baby Breeze, you know, for Drew Breeze, because he was such a genius at diagnosing defenses. They said he was incredible, which we saw Wisconsin. He just didn't have the arm talent. If you gave that dude, you know, the arm talent of a Ryan Leaf with his brain, I mean, he would have been an all time great. You know, so Scott Tolzien also was the quarterback of the last time we beat the Ohio State, you know, Buckeyes. That amazing game in, in Camp Randall where number one Ohio State came to town. David Gilry took the opening kickoff back. You know, that was Tolzien. Tolzien was the orchestrator of that of that team the last time we beat Ohio State. So I loved him. You know, 32 uh, touchdowns in his career, 72.9% completion percentage his senior season. Think about it, almost completing 73% of his passes. Um had two seasons where he threw for over 2,400 passing yards. Just a great, great college quarterback. He His senior year, he won the John Unitas uh, Award, given to the best senior quarterback in the country. I think people sleep on how good he was. If you talk to Badger fans, um, excuse me, I think a lot of people know, obviously, Russell Wilson's number one. That's no, that's no surprise. I don't need to try not to spoil that. But I don't think a lot of people would instantly say Scott Tolzien was also really, really good, right? He's kind of more of a footnote for Badger fans a lot of times. And I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. He was a great college quarterback, especially his senior season. And then number one, guys, obviously Russell Wilson, right? I mean, there's there's nothing to really say about it. That one season he had in Madison, and low-key, the offense he was on was incredible. There was talent everywhere on that offense, which makes any quarterback's life easy. But 33 touchdowns and four interceptions? Are you freaking kidding me? 33 touchdowns and four interceptions? I... You're not ever going to have a better quarterback season than that at Wisconsin. I mean, I I haven't done any research on this. I could probably look up, if we looked at every Big Ten team outside of maybe Ohio State, you're not going to find a better quarterback season for anybody. And I, I don't say Ohio State because every year they have a dude that throws for 50 touchdowns and four interceptions because they have 17 five-star receivers. But what he did at Wisconsin that year, um, starting off at that, that home game where he just diced up UNLV, 72.8% completion percentage, 3,100 yards. He ran for another 340 with six more rushing touchdowns. I mean, he finished with 39 touchdowns that season and four interceptions. Um, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible, quite frankly. And I'm going to do a breakdown on this in an upcoming show. We're going to talk specifically about that 2011 team and the offense, who I think, by the way, was maybe the greatest offense in college football recent history. And we're going to break that. That's, that's called a tease, guys. We're going to break that down. Uh, but I want to specifically go back to Russell Wilson. That season was incredible. It was historic. It was off the charts. And it showed what a mobile, accurate quarterback can do in a in a Wisconsin system if, you know, everything was clicking. And we've just seen it continue in the NFL, right? Uh, third round, total steal. One of the best quarterbacks in pro football. Uh, future Hall of Famer. And a guy who has just really done it the right way in, uh, the, along the entire journey. Still. Still gives the Badgers call outs, right? When you see him team up with, with Melvin Gordon in the NFL or on social media, on introductions, you know, he's a guy that is is definitely um, proud of, of that Wisconsin um, experience as well. So checks every box. There's there's never any doubt. So that's my top tier, guys. Um, Russell Wilson, Scott Tolzien, John Stocko, Tyler Donovan. Let me know where I'm wrong. Again, this is only my opinion. There's absolutely no right or wrong on this. I could be way off. Um, I don't think I am. But I could be way off on some of this. Let me know uh, in the in the comments. Uh, let me know if you like the video. We have more of this kind of stuff coming up. Off season's coming, but I'm the off season to me is just an exciting time where we can dive into some of the history of the program and and where we think this program is, where it's headed. There's a ton of stuff we're going to dive into, guys. So I, I'm really excited. I was in, 
uh, enjoying kind of putting this list together, looking back at some of the names. Thank you guys again for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. If you could, please like the show, subscribe, um, leave it a review. Uh, people always say it, but believe it or not, that stuff really does help. Um, and thank you again, guys, for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. And uh, we'll be back to, uh, to talk to you soon.